We have now done all our three drawings. Let's just roll out and see where they are. Just pan and bring them in the center. If you want to get them to take up the whole drawing area, if you double mouse wheel or click very quickly, they actually go into the extents of your drawing area. But it's a little bit big for me, so I'm just going to roll back a bit. We want to put a few dimensions and text in here. As you noticed before, up the top we have Oilstone Case Template. I've set up a template where all the dimensioning is of the right size and the uh, dimensioning is the right size and the text is the right size. So we don't have to do much else. If we do some dimensioning, we'll come up to where it says linear. It gives us a, creates a, a dim linear or a linear measurement. There are a few other measurements we can make. Uh, a line, so if you if you wanted to measure that length of diagonal line, you could use the aligned one. Um, angular, if your line is on an angle, and so forth, and the diameters and radius. But we just want to do linear at the moment. Let me click on the corner, top corner here, and then let's bring the mouse across or cursor across to the right hand side, and I'll bring my I've done it again, I've in hidden layer. I'll escape that. Very easy to do, isn't it? Let's go back to dimensions. Click on linear. Left click. Left click on the corner. Make sure your green box is around that corner like it is there. And bring your cursor up. You can see that I've got a, a figure there of 300. That's how long it's supposed to be. But if you noticed, there's a little line below the horizontal line and when that becomes the same length can you see that getting sh smaller and longer now it's long when it's the same length as the top line that's about the a good spot to put the line yeah the dimension line so left click on there and if I scroll in you can see the dimension is 300 we're using an architectural tick not an arrow that's a, the convention we use with the dimension above the line if you were using AutoCAD from the very, just opening up the package, you would have to set up all of these different um, line structure and the, where the text hits on the box. Now we want to do the side one. It's, we can right click again to repeat the dim linear, so right click. Click on the corner of the oil stone and come down to here. And we just come away from the line, a bit like that. It says 10 mil. Right click left click, do the same again and that will give us that 16 mil. Try and line those two measurements up just scroll in if you can't see them and get your cursor to go over the other one. That's why my cursor uh, hairs are so long so I can actually line up with other entities. We'll, we'll need to do one for the height of this uh, chamfer here so we right click on that, repeat linear, left click on there left click on the chamfer see how it's reading that way but if we bring it across it'll come to 5 mil. so we'll bring, put it about there so left click on that position we can do the other ones quickly so right click again to get the dim linear up again we want to go across the ball stone case it's at 72 line it up with the other ones across the other side right click repeat dim linear bottom corner to the midpoint wait till those two lines are about the same distance left click, right click again for dim linear left click on that centre point now I want to go to the very top so I'm going to click up to that corner bit there and just line up my dimensions with the one another like that so right click repeat dim linear we want to come down scroll down roll your wheel out, scroll down and I just want to get a measurement of the oil stone itself. So right click and press escape. Right click again to repeat dim linear. And the corner of that oil stone there to there. 200. Right click, repeat dim linear. Right, left click, left click. And that gives us our oil stone size. So now we've got all the dimensioning that we need to have in there. Let's have a look at the text now. 
There's two ways of doing text. If you look at the big A, that shows you where the, the text is. We'll click on the down area below it. We have a single line and a multi-line text. Multi-line's a lot easier to use and quicker. So we click on the left, left click multi-line text and it'll ask us to, um, to make a text box. So if I click on, say, the corner of that, so specify first corner, about here, and drag it down and put it about, left click it about there. Now a little text box comes up here. We have to go up to here. We're using a style called heading. The headings are usually five mil high. Normal text is three mil high and small text is about two mil high. If you click on the up and down arrow keys here, we will find the heading. Click on left heading. Notice how the height is 5mm. That's 5mm on a piece of paper. And now we can write in here. Um, probably a good idea to put it into the centre. We'll type in side elevation and then close our text editor. So come up to the top right here, close text editor. It's not in the right spot, so I can just move that side elevation, put a box around it, left, right click, where's my base point, and I want to bring it roughly to the center, out there. I lined it up with that 300 dimension there. Let's do the end elevation. So we'll click on the down arrow, multi-line text, where do we want to put our box? We want to put our box about there. We want to go back to the heading command. Heading, which is 5mm, and type end elevation. And then you see how it repeated after. We can just move that line across here till we get it inside of that and then press closed editor and we can move that text by just clicking on it then right click and move it where we want it out there and we'll do the last one the plan view so if we right click we can repeat the input of M text and I want to left click here for my text box left click again and then go to headings, click on headings, and we'll type in plan view. Close text editor. Just move that across. About there. Didn't do it. Move. Left click, right click, move there. Now, on my drawing, it had little boxes around it. If we come up to here, it'll give us a little rectangle box. So if we click on the rectangle box, we can start, we zoom in a bit, start where you want to have that box, left click, and drag it across over there, right click, repeat rectangle, and we'll do it again here, left click, and right click, and scroll out, pan up, left click, repeat rectangle and draw a little box around there like that. That's your drawing on your drawing area on your work on the just the drawing area.